Hello friends, Mandar here. I am back with another video. If you are in the process of a green card in EB2 or EB3 category from backlog countries such as India and if your priority date is between uh, 2011 to 2013-14, you might want to watch this video. I am going to talk about some common scenarios that people have regarding this upgrade situation. Also during which if you are changing a job, then what are the complications and what are the pitfalls that you want to avoid? Those are the things that I'm going to discuss in this video. So you never know what is going to be applicable to you. So watch this video until the end and let's get started. If you are here for the first time, welcome. My name is Mandar and I make immigration related videos for US and Canada. I am not an immigration lawyer, so anything that I say on this video or on my channel is for information purpose only. And for your specific immigration needs, before you take any action, you should hire a competent immigration lawyer. Now few people have asked me to cover the topics on tax returns. So when you are in the US, you are filing for your uh, 1040 tax returns, either easy or the long form. I'm going to make a video on that. I have, I have been preparing for that, but I have to be very cautious because I have to get my facts straight. And also I'm going to talk about how to bring money back from India, your own money if you have an account in India and you, at some point you want to get it into the United States. What are the different pathways for that? So stay tuned to my channel. If you haven't already subscribed to it, please subscribe so that you will get the notification when I post those videos. Now, one thing I want to cover in this is if you are in a situation where you have downgraded your petition from EB2 to EB3 and now with your uh, and now with the USCIS announcement, you are planning to upgrade the petition. And during this time, if you are planning to change your job, there are certain things that you want to keep in mind because there is going to be implications if you change your job at, at a certain situation. Say for instance, you had your previous I for, uh, I-140, EB2 based I-140 approved from say employer, your current employer. And then you have downgraded that petition to EB3 and it has not yet been approved or it may have been approved, but your 485 is in progress. Now your EB3 for uh, priority date is no longer current, but your EB2 priority date is current. Now you want to jump back into the EB2 queue. What are your options? So in this case, there are a couple of options. I also covered this in my previous video, but I'm going to cover it one more time with a little bit of a twist, which is job change. So now during this situation, if you are planning to change your job, whether you should first do the upgrade interfile or first do the job change and then go with the upgrade interfile. That really depends on your situation. Consider this, if you interfile with your current employer, so if you go from back from your EB3 to EB2, you already have your existing EB2 current with your current employer. So there is no problem going back into the queue for EB2. So there, there will be no separate processing there, there won't be any need for filing another EB2 with your current employer because you already have it. Now mind you, if there is a material change to your job, such as your job is significantly different now since uh, your initial EB2 petition was approved. Say uh, if you are a software developer when your original EB2 was approved and now you are uh, like a product manager. So that is a significantly different uh, job title and uh, also your pay scale might be totally different. Now you, uh, your lawyer might insist you to apply for PERM and I-140 again for EB2. Be this is because the prevailing wage conditions have now changed because your salary is different, your job title is different, your geographical location might be different. So in this case, uh, your previous I-140 may no longer be uh, reflecting of the job that you are doing currently. So in this case, you might have to file for another perm and I-140, even with your current employer. Now say for instance, nothing has changed and you change the job. Now if you change the job, you can still continue with your I-485 uh, petition, which, uh, which is your downgrade petition in progress, that can still be continued as long as you use AC-21 rule to change the job. So your adjustment of status is still intact, but now uh, after joining a new employer, if you want to change it back to EB-2, 
again you have to apply for perm and i140 with your new employer because guess what there is no eb2 petition with your new employer because eb2 petition or or i140 is held by your employer and not it cannot be ported from one employer to another employer so if you had a uh, approved eb2 with your old employer that cannot be used uh, as it is with your new employer your new employer has to file perm and a new i140 for you to be able to upgrade your petition to eb2 that is that is number 1 number 2 you still can recapture your priority date from your original i140 from your past employer so that priority date always remains with you so that is something to keep in mind now um, uh, now coming back to the job change situation so whether you should enter file first and then change the job or first change a job or then enter file it's totally up to you talk to your lawyer it, it doesn't make a whole lot of a difference the reason is consider this what is the condition that uscis has asked you you can enter file to an upgrade to eb2 if you have an approved i140 eb2 based i140 or if your i140 is pending for eb2 so one or the other so if you have a uh, approved i140 you can go ahead if you have a pending i40 you can still go ahead and then the second condition is your eb2 priority date has to be current so if you, as long as you meet those two conditions it doesn't matter if you change your job before or after if you change your uh, if you change your job first you will have to ask your new employer to file your perm application once the perm application is approved then you, you can file i140 and 485 at the same time or you can file inter file um, your existing downgrade petition which is aos still in progress uh, to the new i140 petition which which could be in progress as per uscis guideline so i hope this is not too confusing because i know it can be confusing a little bit uh, for some people but if you have any specific uh, questions regarding your uh, specific situation do contact me on my patreon and i will be happy to give my opinion on it now another very common question is whether to use ead or not uh, say for instance you have a downgrade petition and it's still not approved uh, your IF-140 for the downgrade is still pending, but you have got your EAD and AP cards. Can you use them? Some lawyers say, don't use it. My, my opinion is there is no harm in uh, uh, using them because after your enter file, you're not probably going to reapply for your EAD and AP. You could actually, if, if your originally EAD and AP is about to expire, but after the interfile, you can still apply for another EAD and AP. And as soon as you get that, you can start using that. So there is no harm in my mind to, uh, to use your original EAD and AP card. And then uh, once you get your upgraded EAD AP card, you can use those. Another most important question is a lot of people have um, uh, H4 EAD for a long time. So they have been on the H4 uh, visa and they are based on their spouse's H1B and they have been working on H4 EAD. Now they have applied for adjustment of status and they also get their green card EAD. Now the question is whether they should apply for, uh, whether they should use uh, H4 EAD or the green card EAD. Really in terms of just pure EAD, there is no difference. So you could, you could use one way or the other. Uh, there used to be a difference where green card EAD had an added benefit of automatic extension of 180 days um, if your EAD is expired as long as you have applied for the renewal. Now that benefit has also been extended to H4 EAD. So um, uh, hear me out here. There are two specific conditions for your automatic extension of H4 EAD. One is your underlying H1B has to be valid. You need to have a valid H4 and also your I-95 has to be valid. I-94 has to be valid. And then another condition is you have to apply for your extension in time. In time in the sense uh, not before six months of expiry but not too late either. Once your H4 EAD validity is about six months out, you should apply for an extension. So as long as your I-94 is valid, H4 I-94 is valid and you have applied for extension in a timely manner, you will get automatic 180 days extension on your H4 EAD. So that is something to remember. Now another very very common question is whether I should file for upgrade to EB2 or not and this really depends on your priority date. As I keep telling in all of my uh, videos and also on Patreon side to endless number of uh, people who are in this exact same situation. So if, if your uh, EB3 priority date is current, 
I see no advantage in upgrading to EB2 because you are already current in EB3. You already have a visa number available for you in EB3 category and you have been uh, waiting on your EB3 adjustment of status for a while. So you have come along uh, a little bit further ahead in the uh, queue in terms of um, the number of people who are in your similar category. So who are current in EB3, you are further along in the queue. But if you are not current in EB3, but current in EB2, that is the that is the time when you want to consider upgrading to EB2. Now, again, you have to be current in EB2 in order to be able to interfile uh, uh, for the upgrade. And then also you need to have your I-140 EB2, I-140 approved or pending uh, to be able to uh, be eligible for that upgrade. So I just wanted to kind of clarify. So if you are already current in EB3, don't don't bother spending money for an uh, interfile to upgrade. There, there is not going to be enough value in terms of uh, uh, advantage in terms of timeline in getting your green card. Many maybe few months here and there, uh, either EB2 green card might come earlier or uh, your EB3 might come earlier. You never know. USCIS is accepting these interfile petitions at a single address, single point of contact address in California. So I don't know how they will distribute those petitions that they get for interfile upgrade uh, to the uh, to the regional centers where their actual AOS is pending. So say for instance, your AOS is pending at Vermont uh, Center or in Nebraska or in Texas, but your interfile petition is going to a California address. Now, how are they going to connect that interfile petition to your um, existing AOS application, which is in the Vermont or Texas or Nebraska center? That is not known how, how they handle all this situation. So it could take months for them to figure that out. Or um, in the meantime, if you are already current in EV3, you might as well get your green card. So consider that situation as well. Just because the whole crowd is going towards upgrade doesn't mean that that situation is also favorable for you. So that's all really I wanted to cover in this video. If you want, if you like the content of this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you in the next one.